You're listening to Factual America. And how do you go about telling, I mean, telling this story? I know you, you, you know, an experienced filmmaker when it comes to making nature films and, and factual. Um, but, uh, you know, you start in Chernobyl, which is an interesting way to frame it. Uh, whose idea was that? I, I think it was Johnny. I think it was Johnny Hughes who um, was the co-director with, with us. Um, but we had filmed in Chernobyl uh, for the Our Planet series. Okay. And so we, we, we knew something about it. And uh, again, I think in a kind of a brainstorm, we actually worked out that it was a sort of, it was the perfect um, parable to go with what's happening with the environmental crisis. The fact that people could live in civilization in the perfect kind of world and suddenly an accident happened that took away their ability to live in this place mm. and we suddenly thought wow that's sort of what's happening with environmental crisis yeah. a big accident is happening which is going to take away our ability to live in this place mm. and then when we've kind of built on that and then the other key thing about chernobyl is is that actually although humans left nature carries on and so the moral of the story is that actually our civilization and what have you may not be able to survive the changes that are coming, but nature will find a way and be able mm. to carry on. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's quite a thought. And it, it's, it's, it's that fundamental thing. I think as Colin said at the beginning, human civilization has only been able to happen in the last 10,000 years us humans, anatomically modern humans, have been around mm. for 200, 230,000 years. Right. Only the last 10,000 years could we get out of being hunter-gatherers. And in 10,000 years, we invented agriculture and put a man on the moon. Yeah. That is what stability does for humans. Mm. And that's why humans must never let stability go. Never. Because we don't, we don't thrive in an unstable planet. And you, you mentioned uh, um, David Attenborough's hu humility, um, and we've already discussed his amazing energy levels for a 94-year-old man. Um, Colin, what was it like for you to work with uh, what I imagine is one of your heroes? Yeah, yeah, you're quite right. He's one of my heroes. And um, even now, I've been working with him for about 15 years on various things. To yeah. work this intensely on a project where he was often recalling elements of his career, in particular his career, to a degree his personal life, but mostly his career, was extraordinary. And um, one of the sort of techniques we used in the film was, um, particularly because David's such an accomplished presenter, people are mm. so used, to, he's so used to being on camera, people are so used to seeing him on camera. Um, the director of photography, Gavin Thurston, created this mirrored camera box um, where effectively David could see the person that was interviewing him and having a conversation with him coming down the lens at, at the camera. So you've got this very sort of relaxed conversational mm. experience. And to be able to, you know, I, was, I was there for one of the, you know, one, one of the days when David was just talking and remembering things and reflecting on things. And what was most extraordinary about that is he would have this big recollection of a moment in time, let's say when the Blue Planet film crew first filmed Coral Bleaching and right. he, he didn't really know what it was and nobody really knew, well, nobody knew why it was happening. Um, and then he'd suddenly turn it into this laser perfect sentence. And just the genius of the man to be able to flip an entire story that many of us would spend minutes waffling about and just <laughs> fill it down to this perfect thing that made sense to anybody and got the hairs going on the back, you know, back yeah. it just, it's, it's proper talent. It's, yeah. it's experience and talent combined. And it was, it was a joy to watch. Yeah, I, I certainly know something about waffling, but I think, uh, I mean, does he write it this, does he write his own lines? I mean, or are these prepared, or does he just you turn the camera on and this comes out of out of him what we see on, on the screen? There's, there's bits and bits. I mean, some of this um, was recorded literally over several days of asking him questions and the directors asking him questions and him reflecting and responding. And so some of those bits where you see him against the black backdrop um, yeah. are. I mean, they're his words, obviously, but they're, they're not scripted. They're, I mean, he mm. knew he was going to discuss certain themes, but the exact words that came out of his mouth were what he was reflecting at that moment. Mm. And others, of course, are where his voiceover is are scripted. And, and right. um, but there's a blend of the two, and I think it's really nice to break how you normally see David. It's not. 
Well, I, that's, I, that's what I thought was very interesting to see him, as you said, but you know, I had the, the black backdrop. That's a very different way of seeing David Attenborough. Um, did he, uh, did he resist that or did he, uh, kind of understand why that was a, a, a good technique to use in, in this situation? Cause we're used to seeing him with gorillas in Rwanda or, you know, cavorting with penguins, <laughs> you know, this sort of thing. I think one of the things that people forget, and certainly I, I, I wouldn't have known before working with him, was you assume because he's 94, he's not into technology. In fact, the opposite is true. He's uh, by nature, I mean, he's a trained filmmaker, trained producer, has been for years. Yeah. So when somebody like Gavin came up with a different way of presenting this and yeah. different ways of interviewing him, he was, he bought into it from a, filmmaker's perspective from a producer's perspective as opposed to an individual and he knew that that would really work for the storytelling so no he completely embraced it and yet uh you're talking about technology i mean keith what strikes me and i, I please take this the right way I, the film has a certain simplicity to it i would say that we're in an age where documentaries have can have loads of animation and graphics and spe almost special effects but this is pretty much David on camera, wildlife footage, which I know is easier. It's, you know, it's, it's not easy to get, but, um, and then a few titles that show the, some of the, you know, the statistics about population and carbon and uh, the, the, the decimation of, of wilderness areas. Was that sort of a, a concerted uh, uh, effort on your, your part? Absolutely. Simplicity in this film was everything. Because the real problem with the environmental crisis is the world is confused and they just hear so many different problems, a cascade of different things mm. that don't seem to relate. And the idea of this film was to try to tell a very simple story and actually how everything just ties together um, as a set of consequences. And so once you tell a simple story about why we've ended up having a problem, mm. you can then tell a very simple story about how you can get out of the problem. Yeah. And um, I also met one a great, uh, uh, the, the chief scientist of WWF, Mike Barrett. Mm. I remember going to him and saying, Mike, this is when we started doing our planet. He said, Mike, you know, give me three things that the world needs to do to save the planet. Mm. And he looked perplexed at me and he said, Keith, there are only two, <laughs> carbon and food. Yeah. And actually, that was a genius. He can boil down the problems of the planet into two things. And if we, and actually, I've gone over that carbon and food thing time and time again. And Mike's absolutely right. You solve those two issues, we get out of jail. And, and um, obviously, there's a lot to do to solve those two issues. Right. But it's simple as that. And so the whole idea of the film was, let's just keep it simple. And let's make it a clear narrative so everyone knows what the problem is, how to get out. 